in today's lecture, we are going to talk about aluminum. Last time, we talked about steel. But today, we are going to talk about aluminum in chapter number uh, four. Uh, aluminum is very important metal, but it is not as important as the steel in civil engineering. So today, we need to have uh, information about the aluminum and also we are going to learn why the aluminum, uh, aluminum is not an optimum choice for uh, civil engineering. So uh, we, you need to know that aluminum is the most plentiful metal on earth and is going to represent 8% of its crust. So aluminum is available and you could say that the most available metal on earth. But we have a problem with the uh, aluminum. It exists as oxides. And since it exists as oxide, the process of extracting aluminum from the oxide is very energy intensive. So in order to obtain uh, aluminum, uh, and the aluminum is, exists an, uh, as uh, oxides, then that is going to require a lot of energy. So uh, even though the uh, aluminum is plentiful, it's available a lot, the, the process of extracting the aluminum, it's not easy. And the properties of pure aluminum, pure aluminum, which means that uh, the aluminum uh, is not going to be mixed with any other elements, uh, the, the pure aluminum is not suitable for structural application. Of course, in civil engineering, we have structural applications for uh, the uh, different type of metal. But regarding the pure aluminum, the, uh, the is not suitable for uh, structural purposes. Some industrial application required pure aluminum, okay, uh, like maybe in uh, automobile or in some other application, uh, but otherwise, allowing elements are always added. So remember, when we talked about the steel, we say that we have uh, allowing agents. The allowing agents, uh, it's a, a type of uh, metals you can increase or decrease with a certain percentage in the content of the steel so that you are going to alter some properties. Okay, so similarly here in the aluminum, also we have allowing agents. So this allowing agents is going to be added to pure aluminum in order to change uh, some properties uh, according to the uh, desired uh, properties. Okay, so these allowing agents along with the cold working and heat treatment, so not only I'm going to add allowing elements, but also I have the cold working and heat treatment. This is going to impart or is going to give characteristics to aluminum that makes this product suitable for a wide range of, of applications. So as a general rule, poor aluminum, aluminum is not going to be suitable for the most applications. So I need to add allowing elements and sometimes cold working and heat treatment in order to give properties that make the aluminum suitable for a wide range of applications. So the aluminum is the second most produced metal. So if I'm going to talk about metal in general, steel is number one, is the most used metal. Aluminum is the second most produced metal. So where do we use the uh, aluminum? Here I'm going to show you the common uses. 25% uh, for containers and packaging. 20% for architecture, making doors and windows. You know that most of the doors and windows made of aluminum. And 10% as electrical conductor because the aluminum is a good conductor. 35% for making aircraft vehicles and other industrial applications. Okay, so in order to manufacture aircraft, vehicles, and similar application, 
we are going to use the aluminum. And aluminum accounts for 8% of the structural weight of aircraft. Okay. And its use in automobile and light truck industry has increased 300% uh, since 1971. So since 1971, the industry became interested in order to use aluminum. Okay, because aluminum is, uh, it has uh, high strength to uh, density ratio. However, use of aluminum in, in, in for infrastructure for the civil engine application and the structural application has been limited and of approximately 6100 uh, bridges in the united states only nine have primary structural members made of aluminum so you see here large number of bridges but only nine of these bridges made from aluminum that is why we say that the the use of aluminum in uh, infrastructure has been limited so the reason for that we have two main reasons uh, for uh, the rare use of the aluminum first the, uh, we have relative high initial cost so the initial cost is high when compared to steel and also the lack of performance information on the aluminum structure we have bad information as structural uh, element. So what is the advantages of the aluminum? Aluminum has many favorable characteristics and a wide variety of applications. So we can here, uh, we are going to mention a several uh, advantages of the aluminum. First, it has one third the density of the steel which means that the aluminum is the light, light metal. And also it has a good thermal and electrical conductivity. That is why we use the uh, aluminum in uh, electrical uh, conductors. Also it has high strength to weight ratio. The percentage between the strengths and the weight is high when you are going to compare this with, for example, with the steel. And will not rust. The aluminum is not going to rust. We know that rust is a serious problem in steel. And also it has high reflectivity, which means that it's going to reflect the, uh, uh, the uh, any uh, things from the sun is going to be reflected light and so on. And this is good for uh, uh, for the thermal purposes. And also the steel can die cast. Die cast is the forcing the, the, the molten uh, metal under high pressure into a mold. So for example, if you have old piece of aluminum, of something made of aluminum, I can easily heat it, make it liquid, and then I'm going to force it into new mold in new shape. We call this process die casting. Okay, in the olden days, I remember some people collect the old pieces of aluminum because they are going to uh, heat them and then they are going to uh, form new shapes. Okay, is the what, what so called die casting. Also, is easily machined. Machinability is the ease with which a metal can be cut. So easily we can cut a part of the aluminum. Okay, for example, in order to make a car like this one here, it's easy. You can cut whatever part you want without any uh, problem. So also it has good formability. You can, uh, it's easily, it could be formed into uh, desired shapes and also it's not uh, it's non-magnetic okay and also it's non-toxic all of these are desirable properties for the uh, aluminum since we talk about the advantages let's talk about the disadvantages of the aluminum 
Aluminum's high strength to weight ratio and its ability to resist corrosion are the primary factors that make aluminum an attractive structural engineering materials. So if I'm going to use the uh, aluminum in structural engineering, that is going to be mainly because the aluminum high, has high strength to weight ratio and it's resistant to corrosion. Although aluminum alloys could be formulated with strength uh, similar to steel products, okay, so we, we talked about the alloying agents, so we can do that so that we can enhance the strength, okay, but we have a problem with the aluminum. The modulus of elasticity of aluminum is only one, uh, about one third of that of steel, even if you use alloying agents. That is not going to change the fact that the modulus of elasticity is uh, one third of that of the steel. Thus, the dimension of the structural element must be increased to compensate for the lower modulus of elasticity of the aluminum. So here we are, we are talking about the major problem uh, when we you, when we dealing with the aluminum in structural engineering uh, applications. So, for example. The modulus of elasticity of steel and aluminum are 200 uh, gigapascal and 69 gigapascal respectively. So for the steel, we have 200 gigapascal and for the aluminum, we have 69 gigapascal. So uh, the aluminum beam must be three times wider than the steel beam. So if you made a uh, beam with the steel and another one with the concrete, for them in order to take the same amount of load, the uh, the beam which, which is made from the aluminum, the uh, dimension should be three times wider than the steel beam. Okay, for example, if the dimension of the steel is two by two, then the dimension of the concrete uh, of the aluminum, it's, it's going to be six by six, which is three times wider than the steel beam. Also, in order to know the aluminum properties, we need to conduct uh, several tests. Of course, the most important one is the uh, tensile test. So tests performed on aluminum are similar to those described for the steel. These typically include stress-strain tensile test to, to, to determine the elastic modulus, yield strength, ultimate strength, and the percentage elongation. Of course, we determine all of this when we talk when we had a lab on steel, right? So similarly, we are going to do the same thing for the uh, aluminum. So here you can see the stress strain diagram for the aluminum. You can see the behavior is different from the steel uh, the, regarding the yield strings. It's not easy to know the value of yield strings. So we need to use the uh, offset method in order to, uh, to uh, identify the yield uh, point or the elastic limit here in order to know the difference between the plastic range and the elastic range. Here we have the proportional limit. Uh, after that point, the relation between stress and strain is not going to, is going to be nonlinear while here it's linear. If you do, of course, also you can determine the modulus of elasticity. The modulus of elasticity is going to be uh, 69 gigapascal and uh, is not very sensitive to type of uh, alloys or timber treatment. So whatever you do, whether, whether you have heat treatment or you are, if you are going to add a loving agent, that is not going to change the value of the modulus of elasticity. Another problem with the aluminum is the uh, coefficient thermal expansion. The aluminum's coefficient thermal expansion is 0 0.00023 per degree Celsius. Uh, the problem with this, this thermal expansion, the value is twice as large as that of steel and concrete. The value of the thermal expansion for the steel and the concrete close to each other. Okay, so when you combine steel with the concrete, then you are, when the uh, temperature in rises or falls, that is not going to have a compatibility problem. But if you are going to use aluminum with the uh, concrete because we have uh, differences in this uh, thermal expansion, 
when the uh, temperature rises or falls, that will create a problem. So therefore, uh, joints between aluminum and steel or concrete must be designed to accommodate the differential movement. Okay, so since we have uh, uh, differences in the thermal expansion, we need to take care uh, of the differential movement. So here we have uh, a table for aluminum properties. So here we are going to uh, uh, notice the effect of uh, allowing agents. Here, for example, this one, uh, 1060 with a zero. This one is not made with any allowing agent. This one, you could say this one is pure. Here we have uh, allowing agent 12, 14, 16, and 18. And you can see how the properties is going to be enhanced using the allowing agents. You can enhance the strength, uh, the ultimate, and the yield. Also, you can enhance the value of the elongation because in the uh, uh, pure aluminum, the elongation is going to be high. So here we have different type of allowing agents that it could be add to the aluminum in order to enhance the uh, properties. If you want to see the difference, this one is pure, while the other one uh, made with allowing agent. So you can tell the difference. Finally, uh, we are going to talk about the aluminum corrosion. OK, we said that the aluminum is not going to rust uh, because aluminum develop a thin oxidation layer immediately upon exposure to the atmosphere. So when the aluminum is going to be exposed to, to the air, the aluminum is, go is going to develop a thin oxidation layer. And that oxide fill, that layer, is going to protect the surface from further oxidation. Okay, that is why the aluminum is not going to uh, rust. But we have something called uh, galvanic corrosion. This one is a type of corrosion take place in a certain circumstances. So the galvanic corrosion occurs when the aluminum comes in contact with about any other materials in the presence of the water. So if the uh, aluminum uh, have a contact with another material and we have a water uh, during that contact, then the galvanic corrosion will going to take place. So how to control this? By painting or by uh, physical insulator or by keeping metal dry in order to avoid the galvanic corrosion. It's very uh, special type of uh, corrosion. So here we have exercise uh, for you. We have uh, aluminum alloy bar made with a radius of seven millimeter, uh, okay, uh, with uh, subject, was subjected to tension until fracture and produce results shown here. So we have uh, is uh, a small piece of aluminum uh, and the tensile test has been conducted and here is the radius and here the value of the stress start from here and finish here and here the value of the strain. He says that use a spreading sheet like Excel program plot the relation between stress and strain then determine the modulus of elasticity of the aluminum alloy uh, determine the proportional limit then what is the maximum load if the stress in the bar is not exceeded the proportional limit? Determine the 0.2 of set yield strength. Determine the, the tensile strength. Determine the percentage of the elongation at uh, failure. So like you can see here, I think uh, you are familiar now with uh, this type of questions. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop here. If you have uh, any questions regarding this, please ask me.